we run through how to use Photoshop Actions to make your the editing of the photographs or scans that you've got really quick and easy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn something like that into a nice crisp white background uh, or not even white, you can make it transparent. So what that allows you to do is place them final images, edited images onto or into a portfolio that has uh, maybe a gradient background or uh, different shades on different pages. So it just makes your portfolio look really nice, crisp and clean. Um, you can also remove these because they've got a transparent background and collage them if you wanted like a, a page full of sketches. Um, you can also use it for photographs if you do photography. So what we'll do is we'll create a new document. Um, give it a minute. So we'll set it to A4, that, that's just standard anyway, a landscape, that's fine. Create. So we're going to use the actions. So if you go to window actions, I've already done a test of this, but so these are actions that you can apply to do certain things. So um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you can apply things like gradient lapse or um, you could add a sepia tone or um, you could add vignettes if you want to do stuff like that. But for this video, we're just going to remove the white background and make it a transparent image. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new one. We'll call it white background. Uh, default actions that's just this list function key you can set this so if you were to press F1 at any point um, it would run the action but for this purpose of the video we'll just leave it so we'll hit record now everything we do is going to show up here as an action so what we're going to do is file place embedded find the image that we've taken and we're just going to grab the corner and hit Option or Alt and Shift together and drag the corner. Now this keeps it in the same ratio but just makes it bigger because obviously we don't want... Oh, I won't do it now. But we don't want it, the image to be skew whiffed. So hit Enter. Now you see this has got like a blue colour tint to it. Now when I, when I took the image, um, to my eye, it was white. But your eyes adjust over the day depending on the colour temperature. So in the morning it's quite blue and at night it's uh, got more of a yellow tint to it. Now the cameras can see this but our eyes can't. So the first thing we need to do is make it black and white to remove any um, colour cast on it. Just ignore all of that. So we're just going to go down here. This is the layer adjustments uh, panel and we're just going to add a black and white. And you can see the difference it makes. So then we're going to go down here again and hit levels. I'm not going to go into this now, uh, the histogram, but all you need to do for this video is click the bottom eyedropper tool, which is the whites. So anything that we select here uh, in this gray area is going to tell the computer, right, this needs to be white. So if we hit there, now anything that was that color has now become white, but you can see it's still a little bit gray down here. So if we tap it again, it's going to remove that grey. Now if you want, if you're drawing pencil or lighter pens, so I've used fine liners, so it's already quite black, but if you hit the top one and then sample that, it's not made much of a difference, but on on or with pens with lighter colours it will make a difference, but I always do it for good practice anyway. So now we've made it black and white, we've made the whites pure white, so now what we need to do is select the image that we had, go to select at the top, and then colour range. Now, for the most part, this seems to work just fine, just where it is as it shows up. So this is the preview. Anything that's black is going to be selected. So if we move it down, you can see perhaps we don't want stuff like that to be selected because it looks a bit naff. I mean... That should be fine. That should be fine. So we'll click OK. And now we've got the marching ants, so that's everything that is selected. So we're going to go down to the bottom right and hit the layer mask button. So if we hit that, that's going to... Anything I think is white, 
black reveals white conceals. I always get confused. Um, so anything that's black is hidden and anything that's white is revealed. So you can see on here, um, there's a lot of white and this is revealed. So what we need to do, because it's the wrong way around, is invert it. So if we hit Command or Control I, that's going to invert it. Now, you might think it looks exactly the same. And it does, unless you turn this off. And then you've got this nice clean image with no fuzzy as no fuzzy edges. Um, so now we're pretty much set. So what we need to do is file, save as, uh, just save it anywhere, test. Now we want to make sure that we save it as a PNG. If we save it as a JPEG, it'll put the white background on. Now PNG allows for transparency. So then you could import that PNG into another document and you've got a transparent background. So we'll just save that. Okay. Now if you hit stop on the recording, you can see that Photoshop has um, applied all of these adjustments that we've made into this action, the white background action. So now if you wanted to do this again, but with a hundred different sketches, obviously that would be a nightmare and it would take a couple of hours. But with this, we go to File, Automate, Batch, Different <coughs> Actions, which is that list. Then we want to select the action, so we've just created this one. Now we want to tell it where we want the images to come from, which ones do we want them to edit. So now you can, you can create a, a folder beforehand, but I'm just going to select this for now. And then we want to override this. So if something goes wrong, this is just going to override Photoshop opening the images for you, because otherwise you can get a bit of a problem. Make sure this is selected, because if you batch it in 100, 100 sketches and something goes wrong, you want it to stop. You don't want it to edit the 100 and then realise two days later that it was wrong. You have to do it all again. So make sure that's selected. Now we want to tell it where we want the final images to go. So you can create a new folder called, you know, edited or transparent final, something like that. But I'm just going to select that for now. And now what you can do is you can actually change the name of the document, uh, the file, sorry, if you want. So you can call it transparency or if you've done the sketches on Monday, you can say Monday sketches transparency or something. And that will rename them all. So then once you're ready, you just hit OK. And I'm not going to do it now because I don't have any prepared, but this, all this is going to do when you hit OK is it will close this and then things will start flashing. But that's just the action running. And then all of the images should look something like this. So I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, just um, put a comment below and I'll try and answer them as best I can.